No matter who you are, you've definitely tried solving a Rubik's Cube before and miserably failed at it. Well, don't you worry. There exists a much easier and simpler version of this, the 2x2. Two two. It is one layer less than a normal 3x3, three three, which means it's just a normal Rubik's Cube, but easier. Right? That information is completely false, and I'm gonna tell you why. While this 2x2 two two might look like an extremely simple puzzle, it's actually a lot more complicated than you might think. Just make a guess, how many possible ways do you think you can mix up the 2x2? Two two? It's actually 3,674,160 ways. That's a lot. And just for scale, that's like 600,000 times the number of subscribers that I have. Please subscribe to me. Aside from just looking simpler than a normal 3x3, the main reason why most people would think that a 2x2 two two is that easy to solve is because of viral videos on the internet, like this one, which is the current 2x2 two two world record single. While this solve is extremely impressive, it's actually really really lucky. If you count the number of moves it took to solve the 2x2 two two in that state, it just takes 4 moves. However, a typical 2x2 two two solve from a world class solver might look something a little bit more like this. Oh yeah, and by the way, that took 12 moves to solve, which is way more than 4. Now, some of you might have actually already tried solving a 2x2 two two on your own, thinking that it would be pretty easy to solve. But instead, you quickly found out that it was a lot harder than you had initially thought. Oh dear. This is because you were using a pretty bad method to solve a 2x2, two two, which is to solve it one side at a time. While it is easier to make a single side on a 2x2 two two than on a 3x3, three three, it isn't much easier to solve a 2x2 two two if you use this method. Your turns can be very easily restricted once you solve two sides, and it isn't at all efficient. But then, what method is actually good? Well, most speed cubers today solve the 2x2 two two in what's known as the Ortega method. In this method, rather than solving it one side at a time, you solve one side first, then solve the side opposite to that, and solve the rest in one algorithm. Wait a second, what's an algorithm, you might ask? Well, in speed cubing, it's actually a set sequence of turns that's meant to help you to accomplish a certain goal on the cube. And many speed cubers have to memorize many of these algorithms in order to help them to actually complete a certain step. For the 2x2, two two, when solving the top, there are 7 possible orientations, and for solving the rest, there are 5 possible cases. In total, this gives you 12 different algorithms you need to memorize, which is quite a lot just to solve a 2x2. Two two. However, that isn't even close to the most advanced way of solving this. This guy over here uses a much more complex and advanced method which requires a lot more algorithms to memorize. This method is called the Eric Guna method or the EG method which only has two steps to solve. Step 1, solve one side, and step 2, solve the rest. While this might sound simple enough, for the second step you need to learn three different sets of algorithms. The CLL, EG1, and EG2. CLL, or corners of the last layer, is a set where the entire bottom layer is solved. EG1 instead is where two corners of the bottom layer next to each other need to be swapped, and EG2 is where two corners of the bottom diagonal to each other need to be swapped. This gives us a grand total of... 128 algorithms! Honestly, I don't get why people would learn like 128 algorithms just to get better at this puzzle, but um, you do you. Not only does this help to reduce the move count when you're solving a 2x2, but it also helps you to plan further into the solve when you're inspecting it. In fact, many people who use the EG method to solve a 2x2 two two can one look their own solves. This means that they can plan out their entire solution even before they start turning it. And if you thought that that was insane enough, the current 2x2 two two world record average holder, Zane Kanani, can actually find multiple solutions all during inspection. So remember that insane solve I showed you earlier? This is what was going through his head during inspection. I thought you could do four moves on blue and you end up with this really bad EG1 case. Then I also saw that you could do U2 FR F prime, which ends up with a better EG1 case, but it's still not too great of a solution in this case. So then I checked doing R prime U2 R into this anti soon EG1 and you can also cancel into it. I also looked on green and I saw that you could do four moves into this T case for EG1, but it ends up being a really bad case. So from here I was just doing R prime U2 F, R2 U, R prime F prime, U prime R, U prime R prime U. It's already hard enough to one look a solution all within 15 seconds, but managing to find 4 of them? Pretty much insane. Oh yeah, one more thing. He executed this at 11 turns per second. I'm in love. Yeah, the 2x2 two two doesn't seem that easy after all now, does it? In reality, it takes a lot of skill to get really fast at this event. So next time you see someone solving a 2x2, two two, just know that there's a lot more than meets the eye. I'm Technically Cubing, and thank you for listening to my TED Talk. If you want to see another video like this one where I rant about the square one, which is a really really hard event, click over here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, just click over here.